Welcome to Let's Talk Land, a weekly land education talk show devoted to learning about land and farms, buying and selling, ownership, and especially for real estate agents and realtors. Hey guys, learn from the experts. This is free land education. Hi, my name's Lou Jewell. I'm an accredited land consultant along with my co-host, Teresa Martin, this morning. Good morning, Teresa. Good morning, Lou. How are you today? I'm well. I hope you are. Oh, we got a great guest today. We're going to have some fun on this one. We serve Western Piedmont, North Carolina, and Southern Virginia, so just give us a shout. We'll help you out. All of our shows are dedicated to the Realtors Land Institute, staff, and members. Now, this site is www.rli for Realtors Land Institute, RLI Land, L A N D, dot com. So listen to me, guys. If you are interested in buying land or if you're interested in selling land, go to that website. We have over 1,700 members throughout the United States. And our designation, which is uh, very hard to get, and I have it, is accredited land consultant. There's about 500 of us. We know how to play the game. We'll save you money if you're, if you're buying, and we'll make you extra money if we're selling. We know how to play the game. So www.rrlyland.com. We'd like to thank our sponsor, LandHub.com. LandHub is the place to be. Teresa, our guest this morning is E.K.G. Williamson. He's a broker owner of NC Land and Homes. Welcome, Nikechi. Hello, how are you? I'm doing great. Where are you calling from? I am calling from Knightville, North Carolina. And for the listening audience, um, it is about five minutes east of Raleigh, North Carolina. Most of the time when people ask me where I'm from, and they are not familiar with this area, when I tell them I'm from Knightville, they have no idea what that is, where it's located. So I just say Raleigh, and they say, oh. Uh, you've been teaching, right? Where do you teach at? I am currently at Wilson Community College, which is about uh, pretty, it's about 30, 45 minutes from uh, Knightdale, Raleigh area. Okay. And prior to, I've been there for a year, and prior to that, I was nine and a half years at Edgecombe Community College, which Mrs. Teresa may be familiar with. It is located in, Rock, in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. And also, in, in addition to that, uh, I started at, at NC Westland as an adjunct at the same time I started at Edgecombe. And what do you teach? I'm in the business department. <clears throat> and so for the most part, I teach everything except for economics and accounting. Okay. So you're doing marketing and, and finance and, uh, and business management? Marketing, uh, uh, personal finance, uh, management, um, oh, you name it, uh, supervision, uh, international business. <laughs> wow! Um, it's the last. When I looked at my CV, um, I've got about ten classes that I that I've teach. Okay. Uh, overall, quite a talent. Basically, between myself and another gentleman, um, who does economics, and then we have an accountant instructor. Basically, I'm the business department. Okay. Wow, that's got to be. Their, they get they get their money's worth out of me. I bet they do. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be rewarding too. I love teaching. I wish I'd teach every day oh, like yeah. you if I had a chance, but. Um, so you got interested. What got you interested in real estate? Why do you want to get your license? Yeah, great question. So um, extremely nuanced and interesting, at least in my opinion, um, uh, background in terms of what led me here. My trajectory was was, was somewhat um, different, I think, than quite a few people that I spoke to who are, are real estate uh, practitioners. So to, to kind of give you the short version of it, um, have a extensive background uh, in business. Okay, so I've always been a. I was a. I'm currently a business person who teaches. Okay. Not the other way around. I I'm love a it. Business person first. Sure. So, <clears throat> so I have. I have. Uh, you know, I have retail um, experience. I've done business consulting. Um, <clears throat> actually, some international business, and a friend of mine who is a land specialist, a land broker, with a large firm. Um, one day we were just kind of speaking and passing at a gym. We worked out together at the same gym. And I'm an avid outdoorsman. So <clears throat> I have a few loves. One of them is working out. Um, I, you know, when I was in high school, um, I got bit by the bodybuilding bug. So I started working out extensively, and that's been a part of my life from high school up until now. Okay. Um, and another one was, was music. Okay. Um, I'm an avid fan of live music. Um, I used to play guitar for a band and stuff like that. Wow. 
And my other one is nature. So I'm just an avid outdoorsman. And one of my favorite pastimes is camping. I go kayaking, um, hiking, anything outdoors, you'll catch me there. Gotcha. Okay? And so he just kind of been passing and asked me if I ever thought about getting into recreational land sales. And I had no idea what he was talking about. I said, well, what is that? Right. Okay. And he told me, and the first thing I asked, you know, the business side of me, is there even a market for that? And he said, uh, yeah. And now here's the thing. I knew he was in the real estate, but I didn't know exactly what he specialized in. And full disclosure, I've, I've never, other than uh, investments or anything or, or something like that, I've never had an interest in real estate. So what I envisioned was dressing up, suit and tie, showing houses. Never that's what Teresa does. Had any interest in whatsoever. Okay. And that's, you know, that's not, you know, throwing any shade or anything at the, the residential brokers, but just never my thing. So as he's explaining to me what he does, oh, I sell hunting tracks and farms and ranches. And I'm thinking to myself, that sounds too good to be true. And we all know the old adage that normally when something sounds too good to be true, it normally is. Exactly. But I could see his lifestyle. I knew he made a comfortable living, and I said, well, this is why you're always so happy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It is. It's a happy business. Well, what do I need to do to get into it? So the first thing I did was do some research, and and I had an epiphany when I looked and saw, wait a minute. Okay, real estate is definitely me. As far as a feasibility analysis analysis goes, if there's a market for it, the product or service is feasible, and then it's economically feasible. So as I'm checking all the boxes, the one thing I I did dawned on me later on was when I looked at the fact that all real estate started with raw land. At some point, no from, way around it. From the ground up. You see, a, from the ground up, and that's when I said, "Wait a minute, I want a part of this." So, fortunately, the school I was at the time they offered a real estate like pre-licensing course, and one of my colleagues taught it. So I said, "I'm going to be taking a class under you." He said, "Great," and, um, and and let me pause there for a second. Sure, let please. Me pause there for a second. Uh, when we spoke uh, <clears throat> early in the week, uh, Mr. Jewel. Um, and we talked about me having your number saved. I have your number saved. And, and <laughs> let me tell you what I have it saved at. I'm curious. Okay. It is saved as I gave you a nickname. Mr. Lou the Jewel. Mr. Lou the Jewel. Lou the Jewel. <laughs> okay. And so. Oh, God. Teresa will be using you know, that on me. <laughs> you're going to fit into this story. Okay. You're gonna just, your character is going to fit into this story. So. I go and I'm taking the class, and then while I'm in the class, I'm already thinking about the business model. <clears throat> I'm going to focus on listings, um, what type of, you know, I'm just kind of doing all those things. I go through the class, get licensed, and then I hit a brick wall. And the brick wall was every single land brokerage, and it wasn't very many. Uh, when I reached out, they weren't interested in bringing someone like myself on, and here's, here's the full context behind that. Because I have a full-time career, they were thinking I was going to be part-time. And so technically I was going to be part-time, but my work-life work -life balance and my work ethic was going to allow me to put in as many hours or more hours than anybody at the brokerage, and I tried to explain that, but no one was interested. So um, my, my, uh, my instructor, pre-licensed instructor, uh, we were kind of passing one day, and I told him, he said, how's everything going? I said, you know, I got licensed, and I passed my exam the first time and all that kind of stuff, but, you know, I, I haven't found anywhere to hang my hat or hang my shingle, so to speak. And he said, well, what's going on? I said, well, you knew from the class I only wanted to get into land brokerage. I don't want to do anything else. Right. And he said, hmm. So later on, he, he was at, um, I think, a broker in charge, um, so, you know, some kind of broker in charge. Of, uh, Update class probably, that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, big up or something like that. Um, at the time, it was all new to me. I didn't know anything about it. And he said, hey, I've got something for you. He said, I met a gentleman who all he does is land. I said, huh. And I told him about you, and he said, give him a call. And guess what that guy's name was? Lou the Jewel. <laughs> Lou the Jewel. <laughs> so I called, you did. and right away you told me. I said, listen, because here's my thing. A lot of people have the philosophy, and, you know, that's their thing is not my thing, kind of fake it till you make it. I've never been that type of person, especially when it comes to, you know, dealing with uh, real estate transactions. Why is, why, is that, know, why is that important? Why is that important? Yeah, yeah I, you know, it's not, not, my, not my forte. But why do you so think that's, a, but why is that okay, important? Why is that important? Well, 
in your in your you opinion. Think about it. You, you're representing the average person's largest transaction. Yeah. And then it's just ethics. It's just it's just ethical. It's just the ethics involved in it to make sure that you represent someone fully and completely, and you take care of them like you would want to be taken care of. And so, in my personal opinion, it's disingenuous to disseminate bad information that could lead someone down a you know down a path that they're making a bad investment. No one wants to be treated that way. No one should. So when someone hires you as a broker, they're trusting you with a large financial transaction. So that's just kind of the way I see it. Okay. So um, when I spoke when I spoke with uh, with with you. Right away, you just fired up. You said, I told you what my dilemma was. And I said, well, I, I don't have a, a land brokerage to to, uh, to link up with. And you told me, you said, find a residential brokerage and be their land guy. And I said, yes, sir, but I need to learn about land. You said, join a real estate land institute. Said, what is that? I go home right away. I, I start. I start taking my courses. And I link up with, at the time, it was United Country uh, I'm sorry, United Real Estate Raleigh, right? Which was a residential. It's a, it's you know, an army United Country Real Estate, which we had a franchise. We just it just lapsed, but uh, they have two divisions: one for the urban areas yeah. called United uh, Real Estate, and then of course United Real Country Real Estate is uh, the rural, uh, which is their origin from 1928. Okay, got you. And um, and I remember you said something specific. You said, "Well, I wish you were in this area. I'll hire you." You bet. When you move, but in um. Here, and I was off to the races. I mean, I was off to the races. Um, I was. I took every course I could right away. I took all of the courses I needed for the AOC, um, as fast as I could, you know. And I was just learning all I could. And I started off with, you know, small transactions that I felt comfortable with. And then I just built my way up until after a while, all of the agents there knew they had a land question. They would come to me. And, um, and, and then I kind of suffered from imposter syndrome for a while because, again, I didn't really have some of that um, – internal training that I could have benefited from. Right. But it wasn't until I started doing some serious land deals with some um, serious land brokers and the feedback they gave me and then starting to ask me to come work for them that I knew I was uh You were on your way, weren't there. you? Hey, our guest today, way. our guest yes, today sir. is Nikkei G. Woham, and this is Let's Talk Land. We'd like to thank our sponsor, LandHub.com. Are you looking to buy or sell land? LandHub.com. Previews thousands of properties nationwide. Okay, you, 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 you've taken us from your background, your interests in real estate, just through a friend, to getting your license, to uh, now trying to get a job. Uh, people are reluctant because you have a full-time job, so to speak, and they don't feel like you can devote enough time to it. And truly, yes, I, you know, sir. we've got a lot of part-time realtors out there, and it really hurts the full-time realtors, quite frankly. You know, if you're going to sure. do something, do it. Don't just kind of half do it. But that's you know that's why we have 108,000 licensed realtors in North Carolina, plus. Exactly. But uh, you, you're so impressed with that. But I think the key that I wanted to pick back up on was the uh, you know we we have code of ethics uh, in our industry. We we're the, uh, as organizations in the United States, we're the second oldest, over 100 years old, of self policing called code of ethics, and uh, and we we have to. Uh, when we get uh, when we join the National Association of Realtors, we have to take the code of ethics for our class, which is you know can't speak bad about other realtors. Your responsibility there's 20, 24 articles I believe in there, and uh, and uh, and now we have to do it every two years nationwide uh, to to uh, keep us in balance. But uh, we are we do have a tremendous responsibility, and I'd like to hang the nail on that for for the uh, first part of the show, and let's go forward, okay? So we got that responsibility. We've got a shingle out there. Now what? You've got your land education, uh, and now what happens? Okay. So where do we go next? Yes, sir. So as I'm, uh, you know, I've got my, my feet wet, uh, you know, cut my teeth, as they say, and I'm doing some serious deals. Um, and as I'm proceeding more and more, another portion of what I actually – love about this, um, and I believe Ms. Teresa has mentioned this, um, is, is a people's business. And I'm a people person, and it's a service business. So initially, um, any business I've ever been a part of, I had an extremely lean operation. I tried to keep my fixed costs very low, those costs that are just reoccurring. 
and I try to, you know, my variable costs, I keep those based on what I need in terms of production and quality. So I realized right away that trying to get lead, buying leads and stuff like that wasn't sustainable when you look at the customer acquisition cost. And being a people person and focusing on service, I focused on my, my book of business. So I treated, it was one of my mantras, was I was going to make a $500 commission or a $50,000 commission, I was going to give the same service. Amen. Period. Yeah. That's right. And, I, and I, I, I've never wavered. Me either. Never wavered from that. My smallest, my, I'll go ahead and talk some numbers here, some. My smallest commission check was $450. $450. I won't say my largest because someone might hear this and, <laughs> um, but I gave the utmost service for that $450 commission check. And from doing that, I never left anything on the table. And I end up doing close to a million dollars worth of business yeah. Do you feel? with the same family. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And so just giving people what they deserve and just always having the honor and respect and remember that they could have chose any one of the hundred thousand or so agents out there, but they chose you. They chose me. And that comes with responsibility. Okay. And so by doing that, I slowly but surely started. And and even though um, I was a quote unquote part time agent, I was doing more business than some of the full time residential agents. Now, if you do the math on that, as you know, land, you know, Especially at that time, the market wasn't quite as hot as it is now. Right. Land doesn't turn quite that fast. So at the end of the year, if I've done enough business to match a full-time residential agent, I was doing some pretty good numbers. Yes, you okay. are. <laughs> well, I'll give, so, you, I'll give you an example of that. Uh, last year or year before, right, Teresa? You were our top salesperson in our company. You didn't count me and, and my son-in-law's mm -hmm. daughter, but... Uh, I think you did 57 or 59 transactions. Yes. Yeah, and I did nine, mm -hmm. and I made more money than you did. Right. <laughs> so, you know, land pays more. We can't talk about commissions because that's negotiable. But uh, that's right. generally, land. Exactly right. Because, because and there's a reason, uh, land doesn't, like you said uh, earlier, it doesn't move as quick as a home uh, historically. I mean, I, I've had land, some of it, three, four, and five years. And that's a lot of marketing. That's a lot of time. That's a lot of that's hand correct. holding, and uh, and and we tend to spend more uh, in expense and 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 marketing that that product. So, uh, but the rewards are there, and uh, so it, I'm right on with what you're talking about. Yes, sir. And, and if I can just piggyback off of that for a moment as well, um, and obviously you're right. Uh, commission is, is negotiable, but um, as you mentioned, a blanket statement, um, land does pay more and sometimes I've been asked why and I'm pretty sure you guys have run into that question too well the marketing is it can be a lot more complex for land the work involved okay um, you take this market right now if you will um, a home a home kind of sells itself <laughs> yeah. now, that's not to take anything away but I, I've so because a part of my about 10% of my business is residential and it's just listings I rarely work with a buyer. Normally, if I'm working with a residential buyer, it's someone I've done business with before, and I tend to do business with again. So I only have – I do it very seldom, okay? Um, but but just coming from that angle, um, you know, I've, I've noticed that when I sell a home, obviously it's, it takes a lot of work, you know, and, you know, kudos to the residential agents. But it's going to be a more fluid process. You know, you market it, you put it in MLS, and people are fighting for it. It just kind of is what it is. Well, a piece of land, what's the highest and best use? Should you cut the timber? Should you get a survey? Um, how are you going to price it? There are no, there are no. Uh, you got to get off-market comparable sometimes. You might need a drone to get. You know, you, know, you, you have to do a lot more aggressive marketing and then you turn around and you might need to spend extra marketing dollars on land watch land and farm I mean, you know so it's just a lot more and once you start explaining these things and they see the work you put into it they start 
kind of coming off of that question in terms of well, why 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 is the why is the commission maybe higher than when someone sold my house before? It's sure. just different. It's just a different process. Absolutely. I was just sitting here looking over this paperwork, and I was thinking to myself, if I need a real estate agent, I'm going to hire Nikechi. That's I, mean, I, I fell in love with this man, um, and, and that led me to a question: Is in your opinion, should you sell your own property or should you hire another real estate agent? That's an excellent question. Excellent question. And here's what I tell, because because you know I get that question from uh, you know from 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 land and homeowners all the time. And I'll tell them, well, you know, men and women, human beings can give you an answer, but numbers will give you a correct answer. And, and the data shows that by hiring a broker, you will, even after commission, you will net more. Yeah. Okay. And then you look at the time value of it. So let me, let me turn it back and answer that question by asking you a question. Do you want to net more or, do you, or are you okay with, with netting less? Oh, I would property. definitely want more. So that just kind of answers it now. But mm-hmm. I also tell people, you don't you don't have to have someone. And sometimes by just being that authentic, that's that's all they really need to hear in order to, to give you a listing. Because I'll have people, why, why, should, why don't I just sell it myself? And I say, you absolutely can. Well, what are you going to do for me? And I lay it out. One, I likely, I'm going to market it more for you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to deal with all the questions. I'm going to make sure it gets shown. I deal with the tire kickers and the serious buyers and all. I deal with all of it. That's right. And you you let me do the heavy lifting. I'll even coordinate the closing, and you get your proceeds. And done. <laughs> you know, so um, great question. Um, and some still choose. I've had, I've had some sellers go at their own, and they, they turn around and they call me. And they say, hey. You want to list it? I said, sure. Absolutely. I know. I just, there were, I was uh, running comps on a house today before I came, and there was a house next door to it. And I was running the comps, and the houses in the area were selling for 130 to $149 a square foot. And this flipper had came in and done his own house and was selling it to someone that I knew. And he probably lost twenty thousand mm. dollars. He had it way underpriced, and of wow. course they've already struck their deal. So I can't go talk to him. But sure. he he uh, he shot himself in the foot, and he was probably thinking about that four, five, six percent, whatever the you know agent would have done it for. But what he needed to think about was how much value that that agent could bring to the table. Plus, that's a cost of doing business, too, uh, you know, especially on land. Uh, I've had uh, situations where, you know, uh, I did a million-two deal to last year, year before last, and uh, the guy, I told him what the commission was, and he said, well, that's a lot of damn money. And I said, well, right. looking at uh, when you acquired this property in 1997 for $770,000, you know, the tax value is a million one. Uh, I couldn't find any comps, quite frankly. And, uh, and I said, you know, it doesn't really matter what we put on it because it's going to take a cash buyer uh, to, to, to the praise. But I said, first of all, I said, you're going to have capital gains here, and I bet you're around 20%, uh, you know, based on just the, you know, knowing, knowing what you do and stuff. And, uh, you know, that's going to go directly to the IRS. So right. why don't you just give it to me? <laughs> and he thought about it a little bit, and I said, well, call your accountant. And find out what if, let's say we sell it for a million two, which is what we actually did do, cash. Uh, you know, calculate what your gains are going to be and what you're going to owe, less your expenses. And he called me back and he said, I'll talk to my accountant. And he said, Lou, you, you were right. And I said, uh, he said, I'll give you what you told me. And I said, well, why don't you just give me a little more? And he said, well, I think it's enough. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so uh, that's, that's things as realtors uh, that we need to look at. Is um, when you're when you're listing land products, you know some of the, some of this land's been in families for you know generations. Sure. sure. And and the last time the basis was done was when Grandpa bought it seventy years ago. You know, for uh, five hundred dollars or three hundred dollars an acre, and now it's worth five or six thousand dollars an acre. 
you know that that's tremendous capital gains right there. Yes, sir. And I want to ask uh, you, I want to ask you something real quick <coughs> too. Um, I was thinking about what you said. I don't know if we were on air or not when we were talking about it, but you were talking about your RLI classes and your ALC classes and all that stuff. How much value? I mean, how much value does that education bring to the table? I'm sure you learn things that you wouldn't have known otherwise. Uh, Mr. Reese, Mr. Reese, I can I can say this unequivocally. Um, I would not be on the phone with you right now had it not been for RLI. Period. Be, because because again, I didn't I didn't have the privilege of having a land specialist at arm's length. Right. Even if I did, I still say it's I mean it's it's uh it's invaluable. It, it's it, I can't put a a price on it. Okay. The classes. I, I'll give. I'll give you a specific example. I, I like. I like to give specifics. Um, there was there was a, a, a track I sold for uh, for a family, and I knew that it had some timber value, and I knew that that timber value should have been added to what we were going to list the property for. And I just and I was transparent. I, I didn't know really what it starred at that particular time. Um, so I, I knew I, I knew someone who was a forester, and he he helped me out. So I was able to to, to you know get that part taken care of. Um, but I didn't like the fact that I was in that situation. So I found I, I went down to uh, to Alabama, and one of my courses I took was the timber course. Okay, course on timberland, and it gave me so much more insight. Now, obviously, I'm still not a forester. But it gave me so much more insight to look at that now I'm pretty, you know, I'm pretty good at knowing right away if the timber should stay, if it should leave, you know, um, in a general sense of uh, what that timber stand uh, is going to look like as far as evaluating the total property value right. and the market price on it. And of our ten classes, that's uh, that one I haven't taken. And Teresa, if you can, that's one you want to take. Yeah. We've got one on agriculture too, because uh, that's another whole. You know, that's a beautiful thing that keeps you that I find about land, is I. You know, I've been doing this almost thirty years. We've done. You're the hundred and seventieth hour that Teresa and I've done, and uh, you know, it's. Uh, it, I'm still learning. We're still learning. Hey, our guest today is the Keechy, uh Wilhelm, and this is Let's Talk Land. We'd like to thank our sponsor, LandHub.com. View thousands of properties for sale at LandHub.com. We have talked about a lot of things, and in, in education I think was very important. And I think that being educated and knowing what you do creates an atmosphere that you can be a counselor and not a salesman. And I think that's what is, is one of the good things about selling land because just yesterday, I had a lady call me. She was an elderly lady. She had no idea what her land was worth. She had no idea. One of her children, her children's, uh, what, it was somebody in her family wanted to buy a piece of it. And she didn't even know how much land she had. And I, and I talked to her for a few minutes, and I got a good feel for, for what she was wanting to do. And... I was able to give her some good information. Now, whether she'll go ahead and sell that to her niece or nephew or whoever it was, or whether she'll allow me to list it, I, I don't know what's going to happen. But it felt good to me to be able to help someone without expecting anything in return. And I think sure. a good real estate agent will do that. Um, and she said that she had called multiple agents and no one had called her back. And, right. you well, know, because we've, it was land. We've, we've We've uh, we've touched on that too. Yeah. Is you've got some real estate agents that give others a bad name, but what I have found is that real estate agents and, and realtors are generally really good people, and they'll do what they can to help you out. But I, I guess where I'm going with this is is why, in your opinion, why do you feel like uh, it's more of a, a sales because I don't feel like a salesperson at all. Sure. I just try to help people. Sure. I hate sales. Um, I don't. I don't want to feel like a used car salesman. You know. Right. I want to be able to give someone my knowledge and my expertise and and help them to close a deal, whether it's a home or a 
or a piece of land. And I do prefer land sales. I enjoy land sales more. Houses, houses in one way they're easier, but in one way they're a much larger headache. 